Hi, today we're going to talk about choosing a research paradigm, which seems to be an issue that many of you um, have problems with understanding. So let me try and make it as simple as possible for you. Um, sorry. Okay, so first of all, what is a paradigm? Well, a paradigm is a set of philosophical assumptions about how we view, evaluate, and interact in the world. Um, so they in, in, it's our worldview, if you want, um, our way of seeing the world, um, our philosophical understandings. Um, so in research, paradigms are systems of interrelated ontological, epistemological, and methodological assumptions, um, all grounded in the values, the way that we, um, the things that we think are important um, in the world. Um, it influences what topics interest us, what questions we ask, and how we investigate them, etc. So a paradigm is not something that you change, I don't think. Um, and that's that's why I have a problem with a kind of mixed mix methods approach, because um, and what I believe doesn't change from day to day, um, and how my values don't change from day to day. They're kind of innate in me. They're, they're a product of my experiences, my history, my social um, background, and so on. So rather, if you, it's important that you get to know what you think about um, um, different um, the way the world works and and how relationships and so on and before you actually embark on your research because that will determine um, what kind of topics you want to choose so we need to know our assumptions and particularly if you're moving from an interpretive or quali objective qualitative or a positive one um, paradigm onto a more action-oriented paradigm, participatory paradigm, you really have to know that. Um, and otherwise, you will keep rever reverting back to the default, as many of you do in your research proposals. So what are these ontologies that I'm talking about, these ologies that make up a paradigm? It's quite simple, really. Epistemological assumptions concern knowledge, how we believe knowledge is created, what knowledge we think is valid, and what knowledge we can think is valuable. All right? Ontology is about our relationships with others and our being in the world. It's about our ways of being. How do I exist in this world, and how do I exist with other people and other social structures, and so on. The methodological assumptions are probably the easiest to understand. That will then determine, um, based on my epistem epistemological assumptions and, and how am my ontological assumptions, I will then choose a methodology that suits that, um, that suits those assumptions. And then all grounded in values, okay, which we profess to embody as researchers. Um, so let's just look at the difference between a traditional um, view of, of how knowledge is created, epistemological assumptions, okay, and then um, how a more participatory form of research, views, knowledge, generation, and so on. So um, on the one hand, we have the traditional view, and then on the other extreme, we have the dialectical epistemology, it just means that uh, knowledge is created in dialogue with others. So the traditional view sees people as passive receivers of knowledge, like um, the old view of teaching, where learners, teacher-centered learning, where learners were just seen as empty vessels for prayer and so on, um, they're passive receivers of knowledge. And that knowledge is produced by experts, i.e. us, people with PhDs or studying towards masters and so on. And it must be based on scientific facts, um, not on our feelings or experiences or values. And it is only valid if it is written down and represented in text, in a thesis or in a um, in an article and so on, a book. And there are valid, universal standards for ensuring the truth and the validity of that knowledge. And that is why you cannot deviate from them when you're doing positivist research. You have to do um, the hypothesis and all hypothesis is various steps you have to go through and you cannot move from that. Okay, and only knowledge created in that way is valid and valuable. 
all right? And therefore, that um, implies that scientists, social scientists, um, we will decide for others what um, knowledge they should draw on. We will give them the knowledge that they must act on. Okay. You know, so you can see where the power lies. The power lies in the academy and scientific knowledge. Where is a dialectical epistemology? These people as active seekers of their own knowledge and, and that they negotiate meaning through dialogue with each other. So they are creators of knowledge and everybody is create, capable of producing useful and relevant knowledge. No matter if they have no educational qualifications, they come with valid experience. If we are examining um, drug addiction, then the people who have either lived with drug addicts or are drug addicts themselves, okay, um, that might be an ethical nightmare, go do a study on that, but um, just as an example, those people have relative experience and knowledge. So we need to know that and we need to help them to, to understand and create that knowledge so that they can think of ways to, to, to improve the situation if, and so on, not just get stuck in saying, well, this is what they think, you know? So, and there are multiple forms of knowledge. Cultural, spiritual forms of knowledge are just as valuable as scientific forms of knowledge and different ways to represent it. We can represent our research findings through performance, through art, through poetry and so on. It's not just written through oral traditions. And then knowledge, of course, is best validated by the people who create and use it. So in participatory forms of research, um, one of the, the validation principles is, is this knowledge useful? Can it be used to bring about the change that we want? It's not just, a, was it collected in such and such a way, which proves that it's valid. Um, if we then look on to the big questions, and a lot of this is, is perhaps repetition, but I think it's important to, to, to repeat it from different perspectives or slightly different angles so that you really understand it. So a big question that philosophers would think about, how does the world work? Wish we knew. So a positive approach says there's one true reality, okay? There's only one truth for everything. And humans have to learn how to adapt to reality, not the other way around. And the world is understood by, you can study little parts of the world, and if you in isolation from each other, put them all together and you'll have a truth about the world. I'm wondering if you're thinking that is valid in the social sciences. It may be valid in the natural sciences, physics, where there are perhaps universal laws, but in social sciences, including education, I for one don't think that that's true. I think there are multiple realities. And this, again, we're moving to a participatory approach, the other end of the spectrum. These realities are constructed by humans who are very unpredictable within different social contexts. Different realities form an interconnected whole and a change in one part affects others. Just think of your relationship within your family. If one family member um, suddenly acts differently, um, changes their attitude, how do it affects every single member in that family. And then it affects the people they interact with, perhaps in their workplaces, at school, um, in their everyday life. So um, nothing can be stu studied in isolation from each other. And then what's the relationship between the knower and the known? And, and positivist research, you have to separate them. So there's no... There's objectivity, there's no, the knower and the known is, is totally something totally different. Objectivity is possible and it's actually desirable. You, you, they do not think it's valid if you are come in with your subjective feelings and opinions and so on as a researcher. But in a participatory approach, the knower, the person who knows, and knowledge are interdependent. They're one and the other. You know, if the knower changes, then the knowledge is going to change. If the knowledge changes, the knower is going to change. And critical subjectivity is needed to enhance understanding. So subjectivity is is un really understanding myself and what's going on with me. And that's the first stage of participation because you cannot interact well with others if you don't understand yourself. Then you move on to critical intersubjectivity, whereas where you're you're consolidate, you're coming in with each coming in with their own perspectives and creating a new reality by understanding each other um, 
and so on. And again, um, as we said before, values, what role do values play in understanding the world in positive approach and even traditional qualitative approach? Um, it separates from knowledge generation, but nothing to do with it. Um, in, 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 a, in, a, in a positivist approach, you cannot, and that's why you must refer to yourself as the researcher and so on. Whereas in a participatory approach, knowledge is mediated through the values that should be made explicit. So each person um, makes their values explicit. And, you know, I'm doing this research because I believe in ex, you know, respect, democracy, participation, the right for people to make their own decisions and so on. Um, and that should be stated within the research. Um, and then um, just to, to, to round it off, let's look again at the difference between the positive, interpretive, and critical, and then the next slide will be participatory um, theoretical paradigms. So bear with me for repetition. A positive approach for ontology, how we are in the world. A true reality exists governed by cause-effect laws, discoverable and generalizable, generalizable. <laughs> and people react in predictable ways. We know in social sciences that's not true. Um, in interpretive, reality is subjective, determined by those involved in various social systems as they interact with each other. And the reactions depend on how they make meaning of their worlds. Okay? Um, so as a researcher, you go and you collect data to try and understand how others um, understand their world. Critical approach is, is we're saying that reality is governed by structures that can and should be questioned. We should critique the status quo. We, we shouldn't just accept things at face value um, through intentional critical reflection. And people are agents of their own change. They're able to change the world. And so um, a lot of research, uh, as we'll say, action research has a critical paradigm. And yes, I think it does. It does. But I think it goes further, as we will see, um, towards a participatory or tra and transformative paradigm. It doesn't just stop at critiquing things that moves people to action. If we're looking at knowledge, again, under positivist, we should, we should know by now that positivists think that knowledge can be created and described using hypothesis and no hypothesis it could be proved things can be proven to be true or wrong and you can use that, that that knowledge to predict how people are going to be and act in the world um, interpretivist we say that knowledge is socially constructed um, and it's dynamic and changing according to how people social the situations it is fluid I mean meaning of the situation sorry it is fluid and it is accurate now as an, an interpretive researcher, yes, you're trying hard to understand how people make sense of the world. But remember that you are taking that knowledge back to your office and interpreting it through a theoretical um, uh, lens and adding your interpretation as a different layer of knowledge. So it's not co-constructed in the way that it is in participatory research. That is the difference because you are actually taking that knowledge and you're deciding how and you're interpreting what other people were meaning. Um, a critical um, epistemology is knowledge are constructed by questioning and critiquing. That's where it comes from. And it's about power relationships um, within social, economic, political structures. And the aim is to, is to sort of make society and knowledge generation more equal. Um, if you think of feminist, um, paradigm which is a critical paradigm they're wanting to to make women more equal with men for instance in society so they're constantly uh, critiquing aspects and structures of society that that um, perhaps um, show that women do not have the power they deserve and so on methodologically a positivist um, a, a paradigm we know that it's it's, it's strictly controlled designs that can be replicated often in a laboratory, quantitative instruments used to measure. So people will measure your um, resilience or your sense of self-efficacy through a, a questionnaire. Um, and, and that is the truth. Um, doesn't matter that maybe the day you were filling in that questionnaire, you were feeling sick, so you just ticked anything. You didn't really even read it. 
Okay, so the the saying that's not because if you have enough questionnaires, you can draw means and medians using statistics, come up with the truth. Okay, research is value three. Research is totally controlled by the researcher. If you're an interpretivist, qualitative researcher, you try to understand the inside of you. So you value you. Uh, um, Sorry, you acknowledge your values, but you tend to bracket them. You've heard of bracketing where you say, okay, I, I think this, this, and this, but I'm putting it aside when I'm interpreting the data. I'm not going to let my values um, influence how I interpret the data. I think that's very difficult to do because I'm a human person and I, my values and my beliefs are deeply ingrained in me. So I'm not sure if it's really possible to set them aside. Um, I, and so that as a, the re researcher is a co-creator of meaning, but as I say, said a minute ago, you're actually not co-creating. So maybe I should change that. You are actually adding your um, la level of interpretation on top of it. The others, you're interpreting what others say. Um, and critical, then we're moving more towards participation methodologies. The values are explicit. You're a facilitator to make sure that everybody engages, everybody has a say, all points of view are listened to and develop the common understandings um, through cycles of reflection and action. So the last one is, we, we, let's move on to a participatory um, um, paradigm, which goes a little bit further than critical. So in terms of reality, it's a participative reality. We understand the world through the experiences of people in relation to each other. So the critical um, is also looking at that, but it's not necessarily participatory. Um, you can do that on your own. You can sit there in your office and philosophize and critique things without actually asking others what they think. Multiple realities can exist. Reality is dynamic. It's changing all the time. We know it is. Critical reflection on how we experience the issue under investigation and how we interact around it. So it's critical self-reflection, you have to understand yourself first, and then critical reflection within a collaborative situation. Um, relationships are central to the process. Uh, we don't exist in isolation. We're part of a larger system, and we recognize that people, everybody has something to offer. Um, the epistemology is critical subjectivity. Knowledge is developed through, as I said, critical reflection and reflexive dialogue with other people. Everybody is part of a larger whole. Um, the focus also is on developing knowledge to take action to attain agreed on outcomes. So the intent is always an action oriented intent. We create knowledge so we can improve our lives, so we can reach our goals that we've agreed on. And we know that there's more than one way of knowing, as I said earlier on, and one way of representing that knowledge. And then political participation is collaborative inquiry with a focus on self-awareness, um, action, and change. So a participatory paradigm always results in change. So I hope you understand a bit better now. You can read this through at your own leisure. Um, if you look at chapter two in... Um, in um, um, on, on Pala, it will give you more um, insight. Um, one word of warning, if you're doing participatory or action research design, don't go to people like Creswell and um, Corner Morrison and, and all the rest to find out about action research, because they are not action research um, experts, they're just generalist um, researchers, and well, what they say what they say is kind of general. I think you need to consult um, specific uh, pe people who are actually dealing with those kind of questions like um, Kemmers, Zubra Skerritt, myself, um, Leslie Wood, and so on. So um, I hope that's given you a better view of what is a paradigm and which one should we use.